Welcome to Global Electronic Recycling. Today we'll talk about e-waste recycling best practices. This will be your roadmap to maximizing value, reducing costs, and improving your environmental impact when recycling your e-waste. We'll talk about what e-waste is, shipping and packaging best practices, how to maximize the value of your e-waste, and how to reduce carbon emissions and save on freight costs. E-waste is basically electronic devices that are at the end of their useful life or are unwanted or discarded. It also includes parts that are intended for the manufacturing or repair of those electronic devices. Items like modems, switches, and network gear. Mobile devices and wearables. Hard drives, circuit boards, and components. Metals and wire. Network and data center equipment. Desktops, laptops, monitors, and peripherals. Specialty electronics like test equipment and lab equipment, which, by the way, have a significant amount of value in a resale market. Batteries, but be sure to use DOT battery packaging guidelines if you're shipping the batteries not in a device. So, what isn't e waste? Non electronic items like liquids, trash, chemicals. Tires? Food waste? When you think of e-waste, ask yourself if the item you're recycling is electronic or if it's a component or metal that helps manufacture an electronic device. If the answer is no, it's probably not e-waste. Here's a five-step plan to increase the value of your e-waste. One, accumulate as much as possible. I see sites all the time ship two pallets one week, two pallets the next week, and so on. And this is really just going to increase carbon emissions and increase freight costs. If you're a site that doesn't have any more room than that for one or two pallets, that's okay. Ship it when you need to. But if you're a site that has a warehouse that you could accumulate more than a few pallets, maybe even as much as a truckload, you're going to reduce your freight costs significantly and save the environment by reducing the carbon emissions. Number two, don't break it. Whenever possible, keep the unit intact. For instance, if you have a laptop, don't just toss it in a Gaylord box and allow it to get broken. This is an item that we like to try to refurbish and remarket and get you as much value out of that item as possible. But if it's all broken, it's very difficult to do that. Number three, avoid degaussing your hard drives. Degaussing is a method that's used to render the hard drive unusable. It doesn't function anymore. So if you do that, we can't really wipe it and then resell it for you. Rest assured, we always wipe and sanitize the data and then verify that that data is absolutely not recoverable before it's resold. The difference between a remarketable hard drive and a degaussed hard drive is pennies versus dollars. Number four. Don't request destruction unless you really, truly need it. Destruction is when we put it through a shredder or a pulverizer to render it completely into the finest little commodities possible. But the problem with that is that it's an unclean commodity. So for instance, plastic may have pieces of circuit boards or metal, and then it has to be cleaned to separate out the plastics, metals, precious metals, etc. We will certainly recycle the item without running it through a shredder whenever possible so that we can dismantle it in a way that the commodities are kept clean enough to send downstream for smelting and refinery and so forth. But proprietary items and top secret items, we totally understand that you may want to have those shredded and we will provide that service to you whenever possible. But there will be a charge for destruction as opposed to recycling will likely give you a higher recovery value. Number five, only send e-waste. As we talked about before, items like furniture, packaging materials, garbage, chemicals, things like that are not something that should be sent to global and will likely result in an additional charge. 
Next, we're going to show you some examples of how to package and ship your e-waste properly. Carriers require all items be palletized prior to shipment. As you can see, there are several methods to achieve this. Uniform cubic items are the easiest to package and therefore the best place to start. Begin by stacking the first layer, ensuring there is no overhang from the pallet. If your site has access to a forklift, stack each pallet no higher than a total of 48 inches. In this manner, they can be stacked and safely maximize the space. If your site does not have access to a forklift, stack each pallet to a safe height. Next, begin by applying the stretch wrap. Start from the bottom and work your way to the top and back down again. You should make several passes to create overlapping layers with the wrap. Don't be afraid to be liberal with the wrap. It's relatively inexpensive, and remember these pallets will have to hold up to loading, transit, and unloading. Damaged goods and personal injury can come at a much higher cost than several more layers of stretch wrap. Finally, affix any necessary paperwork in a visible location. Most often this will be a bill of lading, tracking numbers, or any other unique identifiers. Some cubic items are of different sizes but can still be stacked directly onto a pallet and secured with stretch wrap. Begin by arranging the largest and heaviest items as the base. From there, continue to stack the items according to their size and weight. Ensure there is no overhang and do not stack beyond a safe height. Next, begin by applying the stretch wrap. As before, start from the bottom and work your way to the top and back down again. Again, don't be afraid to be liberal with the wrap. You won't ever regret applying too much wrap, but the same cannot be said of applying too little. It's better to be safe than to be held responsible. Finally, affix any necessary paperwork in a visible location. Most often this will be a bill of lading, tracking numbers, or any other unique identifiers. <music> Lastly, we have asymmetrical and non-cubic items. Most often these are monitors, keyboards, printers, and such. They won't stack safely on a pallet, so the best method of packaging is to use a Gaylord. Begin by assembling the Gaylord and placing it squarely on the pallet. Again, overhang should be avoided. Next, you'll begin to place loose items within the Gaylord, remaining conscientious that tossing or dropping them can affect their final value. We'll complete the pallet by covering the top. Some Gaylord sets come with their own lid. Those can be affixed with some shrink wrap. If no lid is available, the Gaylord can be sealed with, you guessed it, more shrink wrap. Begin by wrapping the edge with one layer of the wrap, giving the next step something to adhere to. Next, make passes back and forth until it's completely covered. Finish by making a final pass around the edge to hold it all together. Finally, affix any necessary paperwork in a visible location. Most often this will be a bill of lading, tracking numbers, or any other unique identifiers. If you have an oversized item that will not stack neatly on a pallet, reach out to our team so we can guide you on the best practices and schedule the appropriate equipment.